Yasas Kalimata. As you heard, my name is Costandino Carnassus, and I'm a Greek American from San Francisco. And I'd like to share with you today my story of finding my best self and what I did with my life once I, I did find my best self. Um, I'll try to speak slowly out of respect for the interpreter. And I'll also uh, apologize in advance. I seem to have contracted a bit of a cold on the travels to Greece. So I'll do my best, but I, I apologize. Um, my story began at six years old when I started running home from kindergarten as I was a young boy. I loved to run as a young child. And I ran competitively all through my youth until I was in my first year of high school. I ran cross country, but at the conclusion of the cross country season, I gave up running. I thought running was a waste of time. I was 15 years old. I had better things to do with my life than to spend it running. So I finished high school and I went on to university. I finished university and I went on to graduate school. I eventually went on to business school and got a business degree, an MBA. And I landed a very comfortable corporate job in San Francisco with a global Fortune 500 company, uh, GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, by all accounts, I was successful. I was 29 years old. I had a very nice paycheck. I had stock options. I had a company car, free health care benefits, uh, 401k matching plan. I was the picture of success. I should be happy. I wasn't happy. I was miserable. I didn't like being a businessman. It just wasn't me. And then I found myself in a nightclub, in a bar, on the night of my 30th birthday, uh, doing what many people do on their 30th birthday. I was drinking with my friends to celebrate. But around midnight, something happened. Something in me changed. And I told my friends I was going to leave. And they said, why are you leaving? It's your 30th birthday. The night is young. Let's have another round of tequila. And I said, no, no, uh, instead of celebrating by drinking, I'm going to run 30 miles tonight to celebrate. And that's about 50 kilometers. And my friends looked at me and they, they laughed. They said, you're not a runner, you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, I am drunk, but I'm still going to do it. And so I walked out of the bar. And I didn't even own running gear at that point. Um, thankfully, I had some very comfortable silk underwear on, so I took off my pants, and I started running south. And I knew there was a town 50 kilometers away from San Francisco called Half Moon Bay, and I said, make that your destination. So I started running. And I got to about 20 kilometers, and the alcohol started to wear off. <laughs> and I thought, what on earth am I doing? This is absurd. It was about three in the morning at that point. Uh, but something just seemed right. Something clicked. Uh, I was on a, a country road by myself. It was dark. Uh, the stars were out. The moon was, was shining. It just felt like at that moment in time, that was precisely where I was meant to be. Eventually, I made it to Half Moon Bay the next morning. It took me eight hours. I ran straight through the night. Um, it wasn't pretty the next day. <laughs> there was some blistering and, and there was some chafing in places the sun doesn't shine. <laughs> but I decided that night that I was going to become a runner. I was going to resign, quit my job, and become a runner. And also I thought, perhaps what I just did was the furthest any human has ever run. It was beyond a marathon. Perhaps that was, I've already set records. And then someone told me about a 160-kilometer foot race called the Western States. And I said, hold it, 160 kilometers? How many, how many days is over? Where, where are the hotels that you sleep in along the way? And he said, oh, oh there, there are no hotels. He said, the starting gun goes off and you run. And you either collapse or you reach the finish line. And I couldn't wrap my head around this idea. It was such an expansive thing to think that a human could run 160 kilometers nonstop. He also said this race is staged in the mountains of California. You must climb towering mountain peaks, descend into impossibly deep valleys, forge rivers along the way. 
And I said, no human can do this. It's impossible. I must try. <laughs> and this is a picture of me crossing the river at about the 125 kilometer mark. It's called the Rucky Chucky River. And what happens at night is you put a headlamp on and you just keep going. After 21 hours of continuous running, I reached the finish line. And at that point, I was hooked. I thought, I can do anything. And then I heard about a race called the Badwater Ultra Marathon, considered the world's toughest foot race. Uh, Badwater is the lowest point in the Western Hemisphere. It's 85 meters below sea level. 216 kilometers from the lowest point is the highest point in the contiguous U.S., Mount Whitney. It's about 5,000 meters high. The idea is to run from the lowest point to the highest point, 216 kilometers nonstop. Now, right in the middle of those two, those two points is something called Death Valley. And the race is held in the summer, and temperatures get pretty warm in Death Valley in the middle of summer. In fact, in this photo right here, the temperatures are 53 degrees. <laughs> now, you'll notice a couple interesting things about this photo. Um, one, I'm wearing a 100% UV protective suit. And why is that? I've learned that when temperatures get above about 45 degrees, even if you have complete sunblock on your skin, you can get blisters. So I put on this protective suit, and that's how I avoid getting blisters on my skin. You might also notice that I'm running on the white line. Why am I running down the white line? Well, the tarmac, the asphalt, can exceed 90 degrees, and it can melt the soles of your shoes. So I'll tell you about the first time I tried this race. Um, has anyone here ever roasted a marshmallow with a stick over a live flat fire? And what happens if you get the marshmallow too close to the flame? Yep, it just slides right off the end and leaves this white goo mark on your, on your stick, right? Well, I was running the Badwater Ultra Marathon, and my foot slid right out from my shoe. And I thought, what just happened? And there's a big goo mark right there. The sole of my shoe had melted off. So I replaced my shoes and, and kept running. Uh, I've, since gone, I've now completed the Badwater Ultra Marathon, the world's toughest foot race, on 10 occasions. Uh, I've, okay. uh, I've also won this race, but I never say I've, I won the race. I say I've survived the fastest because running across Death Valley in the middle of, of summer is more about survival than about running. After finishing a race across the hottest place on Earth, I received an invitation to run a marathon to the South Pole, the coldest place on Earth. <laughs> and I thought, why not combine the two? <laughs> and besides, I was told there'd be 40 to 50 intrepid runners from around the globe all coming to the South Pole to run the inaugural, the first ever South Pole Marathon. Well, when I got to Antarctica, there were six runners. <laughs> and three of them decided to leave, it was so dangerous. <laughs> And why is running to the South Pole dangerous? Well, it's minus 40 degrees. And you've got to take precautions when it's that cold. As you can see from this photo, uh, I have a neoprene muffler in front of my face. Why is that? You can't breathe in the super chilled air directly because it'll freeze your lungs. So you've got to have protection in front of your face. I also have a balaclava over my head and goggles on. Uh, why is this? you can't allow your skin to be exposed because you'll get frostbite. So for the entire duration of running, it was as though I was running in scuba gear. All I heard while I was running is <laughs> And this is the finish of the, the South Pole Marathon. Um, yeah. I typically finish a marathon in around three hours. Uh, this took me over nine hours to complete the South Pole Marathon. It was that difficult. But something really interesting happened when I got to the South Pole. 
Uh, at the South Pole, there's actually a pole. It's one of those candy-striped barber poles with a stainless steel orb on top. That's the South Pole. And I was standing there looking at this, and a gentleman approached me, and he said, wow, that was amazing. You just ran a, South pole, uh, a marathon to the South Pole. Do you want to run around the world naked? <laughs> and I said, boy, Bob, you've been spending too much time at the South Pole. <laughs> and he said, no, 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 think about it. If you run around that pole, you're circumnavigating the globe just at its smallest circumference. And I said, yeah, you're right, but it's minus 40 degrees out. And he said, just don't let any of your appendages touch that stainless steel orb, and you'll be fine. So, <laughs> so I now have the dubious distinction of running around the world naked. <laughs> Now, I want to see a show of hands. How many of you, of you in here uh, have run a marathon? How many marathoners do we have? Quite a few. How, how'd it go? Not so, not so good? <laughs> how, how did you feel the next day? I mean, did you feel like getting out of bed and running another marathon the next day? You couldn't, you couldn't get out of bed, right? <laughs> well, to many people, running a marathon is the pinnacle of endurance excellence. And Running one marathon, I think, is an accomplishment that should be achieved by everyone. We're Greek, it's in our blood. We should all run a marathon. Not all of us do, but once you do, it changes who you are. Uh, I've run many, many marathons, uh, but I thought, how many marathons could I run in a row? I thought, could I run 50 marathons in a row? But not just 50 marathons in a row, 50 marathons in all of the 50 United States in 50 consecutive days. That means getting up, running a marathon every day for 50 days straight. And thankfully, I lived. <laughs> um, <and laughs> yeah. And this is actually the concluding marathon. This is the New York City Marathon. And I ran this marathon in uh, three hours and, and 30 seconds which is, is a pretty decent marathon time, let alone with 49 marathons previous on my legs. But I'll never forget, I got to the finish line, and the race director came over to me, and he said, I, I can't believe it, I can't believe you ran that 50th marathon in three hours flat. Uh, were you trying to beat Lance? And this is the year that Lance Armstrong tried to run a marathon. And I was about 20 seconds behind Lance, and I said to the race director, no, no, I was not trying to beat Lance. I mean, I wasn't trying to beat anyone. I was just trying to make it. But there was one person I was trying to beat, uh, the rap star P. Diddy. <laughs> I don't know if you know this man, but he, it was the year he ran a marathon. And P. Diddy is a rap star. And I saw him at the start, and he had all these gold chains around his neck and this big <laughs> posse of his fans around him. And I thought, if, I, if he beats me, I'm going to be so humiliated. So it took him four hours, so I finished ahead of P. Diddy. <laughs> uh, and I think to conclude my talk, I want to discuss not one of the world's greatest foot races, but the world's greatest foot race. And that is a race called the Spartathlon. I hope that everybody in this room knows the Spartathlon, knows this race. In fact, it's just concluding uh, a couple hours ago. So the previous two days, the Spartathlon has been taking place. The Spartathlon is a 246-kilometer foot race from the base of the Acropolis to Sparty. And you have 36 hours total to complete this race. Uh, I participated in this race uh, a couple years ago and the experience was like nothing else I've ever done. And I've done hundreds, if not thousands, of races on all seven continents of Earth. The Spartathlon changed who I am as a person. Um, the book was just released in, in Greek. The Greek version came out yesterday. And it's my hope uh, that every Greek reads this book. It will make you laugh, it will make you cry, uh, but mostly, it'll make you proud to be Greek. 
I, 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 <laughs> it's funny, I asked a taxi driver in Greece for some places to run, and, and the man cautioned me. He said, oh, you must be very careful of traffic, very cautious. Running is new here in Greece. And I felt like shaking his neck, saying the Greeks invented running 2,500 years ago. <laughs> uh, but the Spartathlon is a fantastic race. It is us. There will never be another race like that. It belongs to the Greeks. So long live Phidipides, uh, that heroic Athenian, Hemodromi, and long live Greece. Afarisos. <laughs>